Hello and welcome to How to Scrum. My name is Safra Zaran and in today's video I want to talk about efficiencies. For an agile project delivery, what are the, some of the efficiencies metric that you can come up with and to help the management or the team to understand how well the team is doing? And in today's video, I want to cover four of these uh, efficiency metrics. The first one being lead time. Lead time is the, the time it takes for, uh, for a request to be placed and for that request to be completed. So it could be a story uh, that has been kind of uh, created, but how long does that story then get picked up and worked in a sprint and completed? So that's the lead time. The other metric we could use is the cycle time. Cycle time is basically once the story is created, and it's on it's on the backlog, but when does it get picked up and, and the work starts? So when the work starts uh, and, it, and then it completes, that's the cycle time that it takes from start to end. The other one that we are quite familiar with in Agile is the velocity. Velocity is a way of calculating how many story points does a team complete within a two week sprint. So this is something that we are quite familiar with. And while the sprint is active, we also have a sprint burn down uh, metric that we can use that just shows how efficient the team is doing in terms of their performance in that sprint. So in this video, I wanna go through these four metrics and help you understand that when people ask uh, what are, how lean or how well is the project team, uh, the Scrum team is doing, uh, you can leverage these metrics to help them understand. So starting with the lead time, so lead time is the time takes to place an order and have that order completed. And then the cycle time is the time it takes to complete that order from start to end, as we mentioned earlier. So how do we describe this in terms of, um, in terms of a timeline? So if, for example, we were to say, if this is a timeline, uh, and I will use a concept of a customer coming in to order, place an order for a coffee, and then have that coffee completed to describe what is lead time and what is cycle time. So a customer would come in and say, we'll place, we'll place an order. The cashier would take the order and put it on, onto the queue. And then the barista, the barista would take that order and make the coffee. And then the coffee is, is ready. Coffee is ready here. So the lead time here is the time it takes to come in and place the order and have the order completed. So this is the lead time. The cycle time is the time it took for the order to be picked up and completed. That's the cycle time. So what can happen what can, what can issues happen here if I was to put this into my Scrum? Well, I may have a backlog with all my stories coming in here, but the stories never get picked up into a sprint for a long time. And then the sprint itself will take two weeks to complete before the product is, or the, or the product for that sprint is completed. So, Using the same concept, you can see that if the backlog keeps growing and the sprint cannot take those backlog stories into a sprint and have it completed, you'll have a backlog which is gonna have lots of stories, but not of them, not many of them be moved off. So how can you fix the, the lead time? One way to fix the lead time is to have the, the, the barista making the coffee faster. So as soon as the order comes in, uh, orders are taken off the queue and, and from start to end, it is done within a very short time. So you need to have maybe make the sprint uh, kind of efficient. In the example that we use for barista, we can have the person make coffee much faster. So as soon as the order comes in, the uh, coffee is made. So the lead time will equal the cycle time. Soon as you come in, you place an order, order is ready. That's the best case scenario. 
so you make the the coffee more efficient in this case if your backlog is having a stories in there you want to take the first stories quickly and put them into a back into a sprint and have that sprint complete those stories but this is one way of doing is, is to make efficiencies within the team but if that is not possible then you need to have maybe multiple sp sprints running at the same time because that's the only way you can reduce the number of stories being uploaded being uh, piled up in the backlog is to have multiple teams taking this taking the the workload and finally if that doesn't work then you might need to say look we can't have any more stories in the backlog until we finish the the the, the already kind of defined stories so this is how you would kind of three options you would have the within sprint you have a something called work in progress uh, work in progress limit and how that works is that within within the development for example so if we have a development taking place we can have a limit that within the within that kind of um, status we can only have two tickets the maximum of two tickets so this will limit number of tickets being sitting in progress and not being moved on so you are limiting the number of tickets being developed at any one time so this will tell you that there will only be ticket that will be worked on instantly and not just sitting there in progress and you're thinking someone's work has been done but it's not the other thing that i want to talk about now is is the is the velocity so the velocity is that you have a team that says okay we're gonna commit to this many stories but in reality when they finish they only finish these kind of uh, uh comp that's what they commit and that's what they complete so you can see they have to make sure that whatever they whatever they complete is actually is what they actually committed to this is the best case scenario so once you understand the velocity the number of story points that they finish within a sprint you'll be able to say that if the velocity was say 25 story points then you can see that if i had a pie i would cut out that many slices of 25 story points so then you can see that if this equals one sprint then i can map out how many sprints i would be i would need to complete the whole project so this would also give me the kind of timelines for the management to see that if this is sprint one and then two three four five etc you'll see that it'll take this long uh, say from january to say june this will give you an idea so the velocity will also help uh, how efficient the team is to make it go faster obviously you need to increase the kind of the velocity to from 25 say to say make it 50 so you take more stories uh, to be worked on the other one that we can work on is the sprint bur sprint burn down the sprint burn down chart basically takes the current sprint and says okay how many story points did you start off with 100 so you have one week here and you have two weeks over here that's when the sprint finishes ideally you need to go straight and that's how you're going to finish it but what happens in reality is that the team will start working on it and nothing would happen and suddenly they would burn they would burn um, uh, move the stories to done it'll move that that and then they'll work another story once they're finished done it'll go down like that so the idea is to stay within this kind of black line to finish on time but when what happens most likely is that that's not how it happens so you have you have a kind of the story that goes this is how it's supposed to be but what really happens is that they will start and nothing will get burned down and then they'll, it will just stand up kind of goes up and down so you know that they already missed they're going to miss uh, completing all the stories so the sprint burn down tells you the instant uh, progress the team is doing and how they're doing in that sprint the velocity tells you an overall how they have managed to do in the past sprint so you can get kind of a, a kind of a metric across three or four previous sprints and find out what they managed to do and get the velocity so that you can cut out the cake in terms of how many story points it can complete and then work out a kind of gan chart style number of sprints to give you the timelines but the whole idea behind lead time and the cycle time is that it's all about the efficiencies how 
how the team is able to, so the so the just to summarize the lead time is the how you process the work and uh, and how quickly you process that work is the is cycle time so in, in if ever you asked in in your job uh, to describe how would you measure the efficiency of your project you will say that i have the velocity to look at i have the sprint burn down chart to look at i also have the um, the lead time and the cycle time to, to kind of work on. So these kind of four metrics will give you some idea in terms of what is a, what, how efficient the project is actually moving with the team that you have at your disposal. Thank you for watching. Uh, let me know if there's anything else that you would like to for me to talk about and uh, keep watching. Don't forget to, to continue to visit the howtoscrum.com website for finding all sorts of new material in terms of templates, blog, videos. And uh, again, thank you so much. Take care.